In this lesson, we're going to show you how to get set up with a Amazon Web Services, uh, AWS for short. We're going to show you how to sign up for an account, um, set up users, policies, and keys. Um, so the key things are going to be permissions, how to download key pairs, and um, show you a little bit of the SDK. So it's going to be mostly hands-on. Uh, we're going to walk you, screencast the entire process. Um, Sergio here is going. Sergio Luna here is going to walk you through this. So it'll help. If you sign up for an account and then follow along with this lesson. Um, having said that, I'll let um, Sergio take it from here. We're going to switch to the um, the web now. OK, so the first thing you're going to want to do is create your account. It's important to note that you're going to need a credit card, and the free tier is only 12 months long. So after 12 months, they're going to start charging you if you're, if you're currently using their services. When you create create account, you're going to come to this page right here, where you're going to enter your account name, your email, and a password. Once you hit continue, it'll go to this next page where initially it's going to be on company account. You're probably going to want a personal account because this is just for your own personal use. You fill out all this information and then you fill out the credit card info on the next page and you're going to be ready to go. It's important to know also that you are probably going to want to set up a billing alarm just in case you go over the free tiers allotted services. Say you have an EC2 instance and it's being used too much or you have a size that's too big, you're going to want to know that. And you can set up billing alarms so that Amazon emails you or notifies you however you want to, so you can cancel it right away. Um, we know there's a free tier account in the US, but you have some of you watching from uh, China, India, Brazil, or any other country. I'm sure there is some free tier available for you guys. Um, so if not, just post in the board, see what we can do. But uh, you can also use other cloud services like Microsoft or uh, Google, as I mentioned earlier. But we chose Amazon because it was the most popular service out there. And now you're going to be on the home page after you log in. And the first thing you're going to want to look at are user roles and policies that you can create. You can click up here on services. And down here where it says security, identity, and compliance, you can click on IAM, IAM. And here's where you can create users so that you can collaborate with other people. When you're logged in right as now, you're the root account. You, you own this account. And you can create users who can view and use your services as much as you allow them to. You create policies that denote how much they're allowed to use it. To create one, you just go right here on this tab where it says users. And up top, you would add a user, create their username, and it's going to follow, it's going to flow through permissions. You're going to review, and it's going to say, do you want them? Do you want to uh, create the password for them? Do you want them to write their own password, give us their email? Information like that. And then you're going to end up with a user like this. You would have already created some permissions for them, but you can also go back in and edit them whenever you want. So you would just come into where it says users, click on your user, the user you created, and then you go in the permissions tab, you can go to add permissions. You're going to want to look at existing policies directly because those are policies that Amazon writes for you. You don't have to worry about coding it exactly as they want it. So let's say you wanted to give uh, this user EC2 instance services. You would type in EC2 right here in that search bar. Look for Amazon EC2 full access. Click on it, and you just continue through here. You add permissions. And there you go. Now this user is allowed to create, edit, and do anything that EC2 is allowed to do. And it's important to note that when you give a user access like this, it's going to allow them to use your credit card so they can create instances. And maybe they're going to create one that's not allotted in the free tier. And it's going to be all on your information. Your credit card is used even though it's their user account. From there. Once you have a user, if you want to be able to use AWS client in a terminal, what you would want to do is first set up what are called access keys. There's an access key, a public one, and then a private one. It's very important to note that you can only download this once. Once you've downloaded it, you can't download it again. So it's, I recommend backing it up more than once, backing it up onto a device and then onto a different device, just in case you lose it. The way you would do that is once again, you go to the um, Actually, you can come up here where your username is. Go to My Security Credentials. You can skip this. And where it says Access Keys right here. You're going to want to click on that and say Create New Access Key. 
it's going to tell you download this file now and you're not going to be able to download it again so go ahead and download it and there's the access key if you want to take a look at what it looks like it's just a comma separated it's going to show you your access key right here this one's public you can find this on amazon on your account but down here the secret key only you have this that's why you want to back this up and download it to a couple of secure devices so that you don't ever lose it and if, if it were the case that you do lose it you can always come in here and make an active on one of your older keys that you're no longer using or because you forgot the information for and once it's inactive you can no longer use it the reason you have to make one inactive is because you're only allowed to have two at a time that's the max you can ever have and if you ever need another one the only option you have is to delete one of your older ones and create one of the newer ones so now using your AWS access key you can download the AWS client onto your terminal to do that on Ubuntu it's sudo apt get install AWS cli it downloads go ahead and say yes and while that's downloading you can go ahead and copy and paste your values because we're going to need those right now okay so now you have AWS and you're going to want to run AWS configure so it's going to ask you right here what's your access key go ahead and paste that one in and then it's going to ask you well what's your secret key so we're going to copy that and paste that one in then it's going to ask you which region you want to use we're going to go ahead and use us west one and then it's going to ask you output format i recommend you use json because it's the easiest to work with so for regions people in other countries where they find their available regions you can google aws regions and it'll show you a list of everything that they have right here. These regions are the denoted in your account. When you look up to the top right, let's say I want to go into a service. It's not important. Up here is the region that you're currently working in. Okay. So we're in US West, which happens to be US West 1 right here. And once you've done that for your AWS CLI, you can use any of the services that they have, like yeah, you want S3. to increase your screen size. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Control plus. There you go. There we go. You run AWS S3. Say you want to list what you have, and it's going to show you these are the buckets you have for, say, S3. And you can just check the type of commands you can run with AWS help, and it'll show you a whole list of things you can do on here. And that's for the AWS client. So if you want to work with your AWS account through the terminal and you don't want to have to download some third party uh, library, you can use that. And the only thing aside from that is if you wanted to write code for your AWS services, you would write, like, let's say you want to write something in PHP, you look for the AWS SDK for PHP. You go in, go in here and you would just follow the instructions on here to be able to write actual code that will pull information from any of your AWS services. In this, you're also going to need to uh, supply your access keys, your access key and your secret key. It's just going to be written in code, and you're going to want to make sure that's secure. So that's how you set up AWS client and your users and the overlook at the SDKs that they have.